Should a leader's values and moral reasoning differ between their professional and personal lives? To answer this question, we only have to look at contemporary leadership theories and perhaps authentic leadership literature in particular. It is strongly argued that you cannot be an authentic leader if you have divergent or ambiguous values. Some have argued that out of necessity, business requires that ethics, though not the law, needs to be broken. Grace and Cohen argue that perhaps they are confusing values with the situations one is likely to encounter in private versus professional life. For example, as a senior leader of a large organisation, it is likely that you would acquire more and more varied moral obligations and be responsible for the life outcomes of many more people than you might as a wife or mother. Businesses exist in communities, and communities have ethics. As such, business is no more exempt from ethical compliance than an individual living in that community or a leader in that community. Nonetheless, with a greater number of moral obligations, it is more likely that two or more of these obligations may conflict with each other, requiring one to lose to the others. In such a case, in a corporate organisation for example, a leader must still make a decision but should make one that results in the greater good. Noting also that some means, such as the physical harm or death of others, is typically not justifiable in order to arrive at the end of the greater good. However, to add complexity to the example, even these means are arguably considered ethical for military leaders in times of war to protect their country. The degree to which the leader would still pay a price in damage to their integrity is the degree to which others would have made a similar decision in the same circumstances. In other words, if not everyone agrees, then there will be some damage. Transparency in the making of these decisions and the values and their alignment to the values of others which underpin the ethical trade-offs will have a key role to play in this process. Further clues about the links between professional and private ethics can be found in the professional codes of ethics for doctors and lawyers, for example. Grace and Cohen report that many ethical codes for these professions include an obligation for lawyers to undertake pro bono work and for doctors to render assistance at accidents, thus linking values in the professional life to private life. To reverse this scenario, we can also argue that if aspects of our professional roles are bound to how we are perceived in our private lives, then how we act in our private lives informs judgments about how we might act in our professional capacity. If we lie, or are unfaithful or cavalier with our friends' confidences in our private lives, then we are less worthy of trust in those relationships. And if these become known by our followers in our professional lives, this may raise doubts about how we treat the relationships we have with followers. In short, effective leaders avoid the potential for damage to their integrity through transparency and consistency, an alignment between the enactment of their personal values and their professional actions.